Hi, and welcome to the 10th episode of the Jig Cart Show. And today I'll talk about the NFL wildcard playoff this Saturday and Sunday. The first game we're going to start with will be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on Denver Broncos. The Broncos are the number four seed in the AFC, while Pittsburgh is number five. And honestly, both teams are lucky they're even in the game. In fact, Denver only got in because Oakland lost. But they really owe it to San Diego for saving their butts. And while Pittsburgh was more in the thick of the race, with all the injuries, we're lucky they're still in. Now, first I'm going to summarize the Broncos. In the last two weeks, they've only scored 17 points. The Messiah, as they call him, Tim Tebow, has thrown less than 200 yards his past three games. In fact, he threw 60 yards, an interception, and lost a fumble last week. And you know who they played? No, not the Bengals, not the Texans, no, the Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs beat Denver 7-3, and Tebow played horrible. He's lost his luster he had midseason when he had all those magical wins, and the defense gets exhausted because their offense stays on the field, doesn't stay on long enough. And it's not just Tebow's passing issue. I mean, usually that's his main issue, but recently he's also had trouble running. He's only gained more than three yards of carry twice in the last six games. But Denver's not the only team struggling. Pittsburgh, although they went 12 and four, have an injury are an injury riddled team. Mendenhall has a torn ACL, Pouncey has a hurt leg, and Big Ben has an ankle injury. But the Steelers' advantage over Denver is obviously their defense. The average age of the defense on the Steelers is 30, but despite that, they rank second, and they're even harder against a run, which basically makes up Denver's entire offense. And honestly, I don't think this will be a really good game. I think it will be a really sloppy game. I expect turnovers to happen quite often from both teams. Fumbles from Pittsburgh, interceptions from Denver. But you know, despite the injuries on offense, I see the Steelers winning, beating the Broncos, and ending Tebow's magic. And also making the bandwagon stop. Next up is the playoff game I want to see. It's the Houston Texans taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Now see, this is a game of surprise. Because no one predicted Houston to make the playoffs. And nobody predicted Cincy to even have a winning record. But here they are, priming for a playoff run. Both teams have rookie QBs at the helm. But honestly, TJ Yates has been an even bigger surprise than Andy Dalton. I do think Cincinnati has a chance of knocking off Houston. But they need to play an amazing game, and I mean an amazing one. The defense needs to stop Houston's second-ranked running attack. If you don't stop Arian Foster and Ben Tate, do not... Go on the field. It's pointless. I mean, that's like going... No, I'm not even going to make an analogy to it. It is just stupid to go on the field knowing that you're not even going to be able to stop them. But see, on the other side of the ball... No, before that, the defense needs to stop TJ Yates. He's a rookie, yes. He's gotten hurt, yes. He also has really good receivers. Besides Andre Johnson is hurt, but that's beside the point. They need to get pressure past the Texans O line. They need to get through. And if they get pressure on TJ Yates, he's gonna have to hand it off more. Then you stop the run. Now on the other side of the balls, Cincinnati's gonna have to make solid gains and quarterback Andy Dalton needs to keep the ball from going to Houston. I mean, come on, after all, it took Houston a late drive to beat Cincy twenty to nineteen on the 11th of December behind the same players and the Texans though haven't won since. But see, I do think they will end that slide and advance to the divi divisional round. Their rushing attack is way too strong and I don't think Cincy will be able to slow it down. And with the running game, with the Bengals focusing more on the running game, it, it opens TJ Yates up to get his receivers ready and calm them down. And Houston has the second ranked defense, I'm sorry for the Steelers, they have the third, will wreak havoc on the inexperienced 20th ranked Bengals offense. 
The Texans bring a lot of pressure from different areas, and I think it will create some turnovers. Another factor of why I think Houston will win is due to crowd noise. Now, if you played in Seattle, for instance, Westfield, you know, you know how loud it is. In, in the Superdome, let's not forget that one. Those two stands are loud. Reliant Stadium will be rocking with their first ever playoff game, and I think the crowd will raise the level of play from the Texans even higher. Both teams have explosive O's and underrated D's, but expect Houston to take advantage of playing at home and beat Cincy in what will be a close game, in my opinion. Now, we come to the Lions and the Saints. Personally, to me, I think it's the Lions' bad offense versus the Saints' horrid defense. Now, I have a friend who thinks the Saints team has gotten better, and they have to a certain extent. But Matthew Stafford is too inconsistent, and the Lions have no running game whatsoever. The Saints D has a few playmakers, such as Will Smith and Darren Sharper, who, by the way, might add, is retiring after this season. And, I mean, these playmakers on the defense are... Basically, all that's saving them from utter defeat. But, as you all know, with Drew Brees in the offense, I will be on fire at the Superdome. Which is the hardest place to play, next to Seattle and Houston. Detroit also is making their first playoff appearance in over a decade, and haven't won since 91 in the playoffs. They started the season 5-0, and and look to be a serious contender for the Super Bowl. And honestly, so did the Bills, but guess how that worked out. But a 2-5 and five stretch for the Lions in the middle of the season changed their fate. Saints, on the other hand, are coming into the playoffs hot. And honestly, they may be the favorite to win the Super Bowl, despite having the number three seed. I mean, just because you're the number one seed doesn't mean you're going to win. Tell that to the Patriots in 2007. And the, in the Saints of the league's the best passing attack, and honestly, they have the best offense, too. I mean, just imagine if the St. Louis Rams were to have gotten Darren Sproles. Nope. You know who they got? Mike Sims Walker. Yeah, how that work out? But, I mean, and the Lions have the 23rd ranked defense, especially their week on the pass. Recently, Drew Brees broke the record for most passing yards in a season, breaking Dan Marino's record of 5,084. And the Lions gave up 480 yards and six touchdowns to Packers backup Matt Flynn. Not the starter, the backup. And Detroit, literally on their own, single-handedly lost to the second-string Green Bay offense. If you can't beat the Green Bay one, the Green Bay second-string, you are not going to beat the New Orleans Saints first-string. So, like I say, I see it being a good game until Saints get the ball. I expect Drew Brees to roll right through the Lions' defense. The final matchup is the Falcons and the Giants. Both of these teams had their struggles this year, but when it mattered and when it counted, they won. This game will most likely be a shootout, surprisingly, to a lot of people. I mean, it's Ryan, e Matt Ryan versus Eli Manning. Both QBs have established themselves as playmakers, and they have a great receiver core and running back core to back them up when needed. Victor Cruz, obviously, in my opinion, is the Giants' best receiver. Went from nobody to an all-star. And don't forget Akeem Nix, Manningham. I mean, you, the list goes on of the Giants' weapons. But don't forget Roddy White on the Atlanta side. You don't, and as well as Julio Jones, Tony Gonzalez, who will come back next year, and even Michael Turner when he's on the passing game. Ryan and Manning both threw for 29 TDs this year, with Manning being only 67 yards shy of 5,000 yards. I think, though, the Giants' defense will get enough pressure on Matt Ryan and force some long situations for the Falcons. The Falcons' O-line has struggled to protect Ryan, and New York has 11 sacks combined the last two games. I mean, even though it was against the Cowboys. So to summarize... My predictions for the wild card weekend are the Texans over the Bengals, the Steelers over the Broncos, the Saints over the Lions, 
and the Giants over the Falcons. All these games will be interesting, and I guarantee none will be won easily. Not even the Saints-Lions game. Now, for those of you that don't know the schedules for these games, Saturday will be the Bengals in Houston at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and the night it will be the Saints and Lions at 8. Both will be on NBC. Then... Sunday, it will be the Falcons and the Giants on Fox at 1. And then at 4.30 on CBS, it will be the Steelers and the Broncos. Now, I know this is a surprise. I didn't read any comments sent in to me. And I know there's a lot. But, I mean, I, I this was a special episode. It was the 10th episode. I know a lot of shows, you know, have a lot longer. But I honestly didn't know if this show was going to work out in the first place. And I know seeing all the views I get for the past 10, it's worked out pretty darn well. So don't worry, as soon as the next episode airs, I'm going back to reading the comments. And I thank you all for sending them in over the week. Now, while I didn't read any sent in to me, you can still comment on the video below and I will respond. So thank you for listening to this special episode of the Jake Carp Show. And I'll see you next time.